Hi folks, welcome back to The Pulse. A couple days ago, I received a letter. It's actually the date on the letter is uh, April 27th, which was uh, two days ago. And this letter was written by uh, congressional leader Jeff Duncan, member of Congress. He is a uh, deputy whip. And he wrote this letter to the commissioner of FDA. And basically, he's asking for a public hearing on NMN. And what this marks is an evolution in the stages, the debate stages over NMN. When we started out, when I was first introduced to NMN by David Sinclair and then others and other people taking NMN, got very excited about it. And we've been having this healthy uh, health debate, right? We've been having, we've been in the health debate stage of NMN. And this is really necessary and really good. We've discuss things like safety, what to take with it, how much to take, should you take you know, TMG, uh, is, is resveratrol good or bad with NMN, these types of things. And these are all good things to discuss. And we've exchanged results, information, and Dr. Xi has been testing people's NAD levels. And this is like, you know, a really fun era that it all began in. And then last November, October, November, we entered the regulatory debate stage. FDA weighed in and said, no, this doesn't meet the definition of dietary supplement. To the shock and awe of many of us in the public that have been happily taking NMN as a supplement based on David Sinclair's recommendations to us. And then he does an about face and says, yeah, he's backing this Metro Biotech uh, company uh, to make NMN an exclusive drug. And so we've been in this for the past six months. We've been stuck in this regulatory debate stage. And then this week, it's kind of been the culmination of a number of different uh, factors. But Supply Side East, which was attended by over 15,000 people in, uh, in New Jersey, they met this week. And one of the key topics there was NMN. And what you had was some very interesting interviews and comments coming out of Kara Welch from FDA. She's in charge of the supplement division. That's where they uh, ignore the bad players in the supplement industry and punish the good ones. What also happened this week is the culmination of a lot of lobbying that's begun uh, in support of NMN. And it's been very intense. And what this triggered was this letter, and it's the first of more letters to come out of Congress asking for public hearings on this. And I believe this has been triggered by the now 25,000 letters that you guys have written, and that number is going up almost 1,000 a day. So this is a growing intensity of comments, arguments, um, evidence from uh, end users of NMN who are very happy with it, who want to um, very passionately defend NMN. The intensity of the NMN community and the industry, which is sort of feels like, hey, you know, I was at that team NMN meeting at uh, that webinar recently with 50 companies uh, representing billions of dollars worth of business. And even the big, big companies, right, that, that have over a thousand SKUs were like, no, NMN is, is not going to happen. We're not going to back down on NMN. They've kind of drawn a line in the sand on NMN because there's an intense passion coming out of people that take it, and they recognize that. And if they burn their users now, if they don't stick up for their uh, NMN people now, their consumers now, they're gonna, they know they're going to be punished further down the road with other supplements, and people are, are going to be really upset with them. And you know, there's, a, there's a responsibility in the supplement industry to defend NMN. Some players have significant amounts of their business hinging on NMN sales. So some of them are very passionate because it's their entire business practically. Others, it's a very small portion and others, it's a moderate portion. And all of these forces are combining in an intense way. Also, what you have is the current political climate, which I brought it before, which is anti-drug company, anti-FDA in general in the public court of opinion. So what it's culminated in is this move by Congressman Duncan to write to FDA. And he said, Dear Commissioner Califf, I am writing to express my opinion that in accordance with the Code of Federal Regulations, a public hearing should be scheduled to clarify the Food and Drug Administration's position on the use of NMN in dietary supplements. 
It is my understanding that the FDA suddenly changed its position and advised companies of its determination that NMN is excluded from the definition of a dietary supplement, including a company that had previously received a so-called acknowledgement or good day letter from FDA in response to its new dietary ingredient notification. Now, he goes on to ask some questions, which I'll get to in a minute, and uh, it's really great stuff. He's done his research. The people working with him, his aides, his legal team, they've done the research on this topic. They've looked into it. This is not, you know, a loosely written letter. This is a very focused, uh, detailed, with, with a deadline of May 11th. They want a response out of FDA by then about this request for a public hearing. So everything's coming to fore, right? They're pushing this to the fore. And what I sort of see happening is going from this health debate stage to the regulatory debate stage, we're entering this political debate stage now where we, we're getting Congress involved and we're talking about going to Congress in a month and lobbying them you know, in person. But before that has even happened, they're already getting the memo. They're already reacting in Washington to FDA's moves on NMN. And they're, they're getting in line. You know, the Congress, at least the congressmen that support dietary supplements and your right to take them, they're they're joining Team NMN. And this is a new development. This is a big development. Yes, I talked about it months ago, and I said it could come to this. It probably will come to this. And lo and behold, here it is. We willed it into existence. And uh, hats off to all of you guys, you know, for your hard work and your passion to defend a supplement that's done a lot of good for us. You know, it's, it's boosted our health, and we feel very good taking it, and we feel that it's a great natural uh, ingredient that should be defended. Now, what I also see happening in the scope of all of this, and I'll flip over here to an article posted today on Natural Products Insider where they have a quote from Congressman Duncan, where, they, where he says, in addition to this letter and the questions that he's asking of FDA, he says, the FDA has broken historical precedent and restricted access to a B vitamin supplement that has been routinely and safely used by millions of Americans to stay healthy. So we're getting a picture of the scope of this and that it's millions of Americans. I had guessed at least a million. I've said that many times on this channel. And apparently the data now, there's a data picture that's coming into focus, and it's millions of Americans and over 600 supplement products contain NMN. So it's way bigger than even I expected it to be. He goes on to say, uh, as a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, I want to know why the FDA is arbitrarily restricting access to a safe and proven supplement that should be available for Americans to use for health purposes. A public hearing would be beneficial in clarifying the FDA's intent behind these actions. Let's get back to his letter for a moment. Like I said, that's today. That was posted today. This is the letter from two days ago. As Congress looks into anti-competitive practices of e-commerce platforms, it has come to my attention that some platforms have restricted marketplaces for FDA-regulated products. Notably, in the dietary supplement space, platforms have chosen to restrict ingredients like NAC or NMN, which haven't been subject to final agency or regulatory action in the form of warning letters. So his question is, has the FDA contacted e-commerce platforms regarding the sale of NMN. Now, they denied this. Ironically, just like the day before, they were already denying this in an interview with Kara Welch and Josh Long from Natural Products Insider. She said, no, 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 we haven't told anyone to remove it, but someone instructed them to remove NMN uh, from their marketplace. So something's going on here. The other questions that Duncan goes on to ask is, how many structure function claims notifications have been submitted to FDA for review for NMN products under the new dietary ingredient notifications, NDIN, requirements? And how many did the FDA determine inappropriate marketing? I believe the answer is none. They've not determined any of them to be marketed inappropriately. Um, They have only come back later, after the fact, uh, when it was already for sale for many, many months and even years, 
Um, what they did is came back late and said, oh, it doesn't meet the definition. After investment of millions of dollars and millions of Americans taking the supplement. So it's revisionist history what is what they're trying to do. But he's asking these questions officially, and we'll see what they come back and say. He goes on to ask, what number of FDA enforcement actions were taken to address the marketing of NMN products by companies attempting to receive an NDIN for NMN-containing products? Again, you know, he's trying to get the picture here. Where did this come from? This was a big about face. So show me, you know, the data trail leading up to this defining moment of entering this regulatory debate stage. Was this even necessary? What did you, what's the backstory here? Um, what was the date when the FDA identified NMN being used in consumer products in the United States both as a drug and as a dietary supplement or ingredient. I've, I've said this again <laughs> very recently on this channel. Those dates are going to be very key to defining the race to market. Who won the race to market? Again, we're in a regulatory debate stage here. This is what he's referring to. I think we're looping back as, as part and parcel of these uh, public hearings, we are looping back already to returning to the health debate stage, which is to say, wait a minute, this is a vitamin B, right? This is a form of vitamin B that millions of Americans are taking and they're happy with and they're obviously passionate about. Um, they take it routinely, he goes on to say. So it's not like they're just taking it for a week and stopping. They're, they're taking it as a matter of routine. It's giving them health benefits that they're happy with. So I think we're looping back. But a lot of this letter remains in that regulatory debate. But again, you saw the interview that I, that I mentioned a minute ago where he's already talking about, wait a minute, you know, this is a healthy supplement, right? So we are seeing a, a, a loop back to the health debate, which I think is very important because I think that transcends this. I think the question that ultimately needs to be asked is, is this really in the public interest, right? You're siding with a small startup drug company over millions of Americans. Is that in the public interest? Is that where FDA stands on this? And I think uh, FDA needs to be restructured. Now, I'll go even further. They failed so miserably to connect the dots, as they said this week, right? We failed to connect the dots on NMN. But they failed us on the food supply. They failed us on other food ingredients. They failed us on policing the bad players and the adulterated uh, supplements that are out there and the fake supplements and the copied supplements. So they failed us over and over again. Again, let's get back to Representative Duncan's questions here. What is the FDA's position on whether NMN would be banned from formulated dietary supplements under the drug exclusion criteria when the statute did not allow the FDA to remove products from the marketplace to the transparent advantage of a company marketing a drug with NMN as the active ingredient. Does the FDA intend to remove the more than 600 NMN-containing products listed on the dietary supplement label database maintained by NIH from customer access? Are you removing all NMN or not? What are you intending to do? Where is this going? It's all coming to a head. I don't know if we're going to enter the litigation stage. As I've said before here, we're in a litigatory posture between FDA and the supplement industry. And what's happening now is Congress is stepping in and saying, hey, where's this going? Where's this leading? What is your intention here? Give us the backstory. Give us the data. Give us the dates. And tell us what your intentions are. And let's debate this publicly. Let's let the public hear what's going on. And uh, the news organizations, let's invite them in. Uh, let's get the polls there. <laughs> and uh, let's talk more about this. I'm going to continue to monitor what's going on. These developments are fascinating. I'm told there are more congressional letters on the way. This is just the first one from a congressional leader. Um, I know that your letters are increasing. I know that fly-in day is coming up soon. So things are definitely coming to a head. And frankly, I'm really fascinated to see where this is going. I think enough is enough. I think FDA went one supplement too far. The industry and Congress and the public is standing up to them and saying, no, no, not this supplement. And be careful about doing this in the future. 
you know, and this is a sea change in the dynamic, the counterbalance of medication, you know, drugs, which have the drug industry has become more about monetization than medication, frankly, versus supplements and really the food supply, really health and wellness, like that offsetting counterbalance to the drug industry is really health and wellness, better eating, better living, better exercise, better foods, better food supplement ingredients. And that's where we stand. Like we, we don't want to cure all our problems with drugs. The, the public at large in growing numbers wants to treat our health, you know, our fundamental health. Because if we can do that, we won't need as many drugs. And that's where we stand. Where does the FDA stand? I'll see you guys soon.